Hi folks, Harry Frank from Red Giant Software here to show you a quick tip on managing your lights and After Effects when you're using plugins like Trapcode Particular or even Trapcode Lux. Now, when you're using Trapcode Particular, lights are very handy to use when you use them as emitter types and uh, perhaps want to create sort of streaky light effects. When you're using Lux, you actually have to have a light in your scene to define the light source location that's illuminated by the, the Lux plugin. But there are some additional challenges that uh, present themselves when we use these lights. Specifically, if we've got other 3D objects in our scene, these 3D objects will be illuminated by the emitter lights uh, that are controlling the particle or light locations. So right here you can see that light comes in front of my text. Now what's going on with this light is uh, this light's called Lux. Let me just... Uh, jump to a, a separate view here and you can see that I've got a null object right here. That null object is just moving left to right and it's spinning and I have a light parented to it. So this light right here is parented to that null. So as the null spins, it's spinning that light and creating a nice little swirl effect. This would actually be very, very difficult to keyframe. This is why light emitters are very cool to use because uh, it gives us a lot of flexibility in terms of animating our lights and after effects. Very cool. So what's the problem here? Well, let's jump back to our other view. As I said, those other lights will illuminate objects uh, whether we want to have them do that or not. Now, maybe you do want it. Maybe you do like that effect. And in fact, it does create sort of a, you know, interesting effect sometimes. But sometimes it can just be downright undesirable. So as this light moves in front of this type, it kind of creates this colored flickering effect because the light has a little bit of a pink uh, hue to it. So what are some ways around this? There's, there's actually a few. Now, if we didn't want any additional lighting effects on this 3D layer, we could simply uh, go to the material options by tapping AA and turning accepts lights to off. Looks a little flat, but it's an easy way around it. Another thing we can do uh, is go to that emitter, which uh, is actually called Lux, and I'll explain that in just a second. But if we go to the emitter itself and just turn it off, Particular will still use it, although Lux will not. But if you're just using Trapcode Particular and you want that light to not affect anything, you can simply turn it off. Now, obviously, this means the handles and visible path of it go away. Another uh, challenge with this is that if we change the position of this, if we start moving it around, because After Effects sees this layer as being off, it doesn't trigger a refresh or re-render of the frame uh, with this layer being off. We'd actually have to turn it back on and then it would re-render. Um, so what will happen is you'll run into some weird caching issues with Trapcode Particular. This isn't the fault of Trapcode Particular, it's just how things are queued in After Effects to re-render and refresh uh, based on the layers that are on or off. So, all right, well, let's just leave it on. But how do we have one light affect a layer and one light not affect a layer with them both being on? Well, there's actually a handy switch that not a lot of people uh, use, which is called the adjustment layer switch on the light. Now you've probably used an adjustment layer uh, with an effect like glow. In fact, here I've got just a simple glow effect. It's on an adjustment layer. So it's affecting the, the type and it's affecting the uh, particles that are being rendered right here. So everything below this adjustment layer is going to be uh, affected by the adjustment layer. So it's got a little nice little glow effect on it, cool. Lights can also be adjustment lights or adjustment layer lights uh, if we simply click the adjustment layer switch on the light. Uh, if you don't see that, just right click at the top, go to columns and select switches, or you can probably just hit F4 if your switches and uh, modes column is, is active. So if I, turn that switch on and I drag it to the bottom, there are no layers below it, therefore it's not going to affect any of the 3D objects on my scene. In fact, let me uh, solo this, so it'll give you a little com AB comparison. So light is affecting the type, light is now not affecting the type. Very cool. 
So how do I get uh, Particular and Lux to share that same light? Well, let me go to Lux here. And uh, in the general section, we can also define our naming convention, although it's a little bit more limited than trap code particular. So we can have anything, or we can have lights that start with word uh, front, back, or in this case, I've chosen Lux. So this uh, light that is parented to the null and moving around, I've renamed to be Lux. So now Lux is ignoring light number one that is affecting the type. Particular when you use a light as an emitter, by default wants the light to be called emitter. But you can actually change that. If we go into the options, we can change the light emitter name. Uh, by default, it starts to emitter. But all I did was simply change this to the word Lux. And now the emitter and the Lux layers are sharing the same light and ignoring uh, light number one because I've turned that Lux slash uh, particular emitter into an adjustment layer, and now uh, all is good. So I hope that helps you manage your lights a little bit more when using Trapcode products. Um, it's just a couple workarounds and After Effects, but uh, these are very handy tips to have, and in fact, I use this uh, quite a bit. So I hope you learned something. Thanks so much for watching. Again, I'm Harry Frank from Red Giant Software.